Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and in this video, I wanna talk you through a really powerful method in Socket.io that I keep seeing projects uh, online that are that are recent that are not using it. They're using a lot of extra logic or doing things a little bit of a messy way or, or even using a third-party library, and it's not necessary. And it is the emit with ACK method. It's available on both the server and the client. This is supposed to be a laptop. I'm not a very good drawer. Uh, if you're still new to Socket.io and want a, a little more detail, uh, I'll drop a, a link in the description. I've got a video that uh, that goes over it. If you need a lot more uh, detail, I've got a course on Socket.io that you can check out as well. But the, the power of a Socket.io connection, which is of course using uh, WebSockets, is that the two devices are always connected. So again, I've got a server over here and a, a laptop client over here. They could be two servers, whatever it is. You've got two things and the WebSocket stays open, unlike HTTP, which over here on the client, we open up the connection, we send a request over to the server, and the, and the server sends a response back, and then this terminates. The WebSocket uh, connection just stays open, and this is really powerful because if somebody needs to say something, you can just say it whenever you are ready, right? Whichever side it happens to be. But uh, this means that the, the event goes over and you can keep sending them, but you're never actually waiting for a response, at least historically. The emit method, that's exactly what it does. It sends something up. But sometimes we need this request response cycle like in HTTP. We send something from the server over to the client, an event, and we cannot move forward until we get something back. Now normally, or historically, prior to version four of Socket.io, what you do is this. The, the event would go over, it would get here, and this side isn't waiting. But over here, this side gets the, gets the event inside of a listener and on. Inside of that listener is going to be an emit and send it back over, right, over the same connection. I've got arrows here, but we're always connected. This side gets the event and then inside of that listener emits something back, just like an HTTP connection, right? Request, response, request, response. Sometimes we need that model with WebSockets. That is exactly what emit with ACK does. It gives us the ability to use our WebSocket, our Socket.io connection to send an event over and expect something back. Let's hop over to our code editor and take a look at how it works. I am over to the code editor. I've got a little template or boilerplate already set up with a three files, server, index, and scripts.js. And I'm not gonna go over it here. That's not really the point of this video other than just what we need to. Uh, I will put a link in the description to, to a GitHub page where you can pull this down if you really wanna see how I set things up. If you, you're curious for a little bit more Socket.io, as I said, I've got a, a video that I'll link in the description. And if you're looking for a lot more, uh, I've got a course that you can check out as well. Um, index is, is really simple. It, it's just a button that, that we are going to click on to send a request over to the server. And then we've got a button here that we're just going to listen for something from the server. So that you can see it in action here, I have refreshed it. If you watch this one, uh, the, after two seconds, this will switch from nothing to do to the server is requesting something. And this is the event that's coming over. Right above it here, this is ours. So from the client side over to the server, if I click on that, it sends the event over and then we get our response back. Okay, so looking at the server quick, we've got uh, an express server so that we can serve up our front end and then our socket IO server. I'm listening on port 3031. And what I've got here uh, is the, the sort of extra mess that I don't like that we're trying to replace. We have an io.on connect, and we are going to listen for this client needs something event. And as soon as we get it, we're gonna turn around and send something back, right? This is what we saw on the board. The request, right, essentially is this, and the response is this. It's just, we, we have a WebSocket connection, so we're gonna use it. So that makes, makes good sense, except for the fact that we have this extraneous or, or unnecessary event. Down below, after two seconds, the server, I, I wish there was a better way to simulate this, but a, a set timeout's the easiest way. After two seconds, the server will emit this event and is going to wait for a response and then it just console.logs the response, okay? I don't like this. Uh, we have a, a listener here that seems unnecessary. We, we're waiting for a response here. The exact same thing is true in scripts. We make our connection. We're gonna listen for that server needs something event, okay? That's the one we're emitting right here. 
we're going to do a few things. We're going to add a, a click listener to that response button, and then we're going to send something back over, which the server has been waiting for. Down here, uh, we, we have a, a click listener that we're adding to this button that's going to call this code. We're going to emit this event and we're going to listen for the response and then do something with it. Okay. Again, you can look closer at the code if you would like to, but if we hop over to the docs, I've got uh, the client API. This is V4. It's only available in version four. So make note of that over on the right under methods. There is of course emit. This is the heart of socket IO to the best of my knowledge. Socket IO has never not had <laughs> an emit method right below it though is emit with ACK. And this is the template, which, which I just showed you. I will zoom in a whole bunch here so we can see it a little bit better. This is a promise based version of emitting and expecting an acknowledgement from the server. It's exactly where we are at. We call emit with ACK. We send up whatever we want, right? This is the event and this is a, an, an argument or a piece of data on the other side down below and, and they've got to wait. So, the data that's going to get stored inside response or the resolution to this callback is going to be down here. They're listening for the hello event. That's, that's what they sent over right here. Hello back down here. They get arg one. Arg one is going to be the string world and then callback that's automatically going to be passed by emit with act that, that we, we do not pass that that's going to come in automatically. And when we call it, whatever we hand it is what's going to get sent back over to our, our response, right? The await is going to get resolved and the, the variable is going to get loaded up with that, that data. It's exactly the same thing on the server. It's just a little more complicated because there are three different ways to call it under the server itself. You can click on emit here, which again has always been there Emit with ACK. This means you're going to send out a, a, an event to the whole server and everybody has to respond. Um, it, they've got a, a timeout. Just make a note here. If not everybody responds, it will air. So just make sure that that you make you make note of that. The same thing uh, for namespace. We go down there. There is an emit right here. Right below that is emit with ACK. Works the same way. Emit with ACK, but to a given namespace. And then once again, they have a timeout in case uh, not everybody responds. For the individual socket, here is emit and right below it is emit with ACK. It is exactly the same as what we saw on the front end and in our code and what we are going to do right now. Okay, let's fix this because I don't like this. Uh, let's start on, on the, the client here. Request to server. When we, when we emit, instead of calling socket.emit, we're going to call socket.emit with ACK. We'll put at the front here const response equals await. Now I've already got async here. So we're going to wait for this event to send us something back. We're sending data up, but we want rid of this event because it is extraneous. Now we still want this part to happen. So I'm going to copy this and put it below our response. Okay, there we go. We're going to wait for this event to send something back. We'll store what's sent back as our response. And then we'll, we'll just overwrite the HTML like we were before. Okay. So this is our event client needs something. It is right here. We're not bringing anything in right now. Okay. The client is sending up an object. So we'll bring that in. We'll bring in data and then we'll also bring in, I usually call it ACK CB for acknowledgement callback. I'm going to put a note in here. Okay. ACK callback is added because we used emit with ACK. We do not send it up. I put it in all caps <laughs> so that you know, I'm serious. We're not sending a, a call back up. You cannot run a call, a front end call back on the server. That's not possible. It would be incredibly dangerous. What, what we do is we run emit with ACK and that tells the, the API under the hood, Hey, you've got to run this so that the other side gets the data back. Okay. So instead of running this emit, we can get rid of this, this unnecessary event. We'll run ACK CB we'll take the data that we were sending back and it works exactly the same as it before, but we don't have an emit. We don't have this pointless. <laughs> well, it wasn't pointless, but it was a, a, an extra couple lines. We don't have an extra event we have to listen for, uh, back over to the server in our emit here. We're going to do the same thing. We'll do emit with ACK. We're going to put at the front here, const response equals. We're going to need a wait though. At least the way I've written it, you can of course use then if that's your thing. We've got async in here already. So we're in good shape. We can get rid of this part and copy out this console.log, drop it in there. 
and we are in the same spot we were before, but this makes so much more sense for our regular JavaScript cycle. Over to scripts. This is, we're gonna look for the server needs something. Again, we're, we're bringing in this string here. So up at the top, right, we have to listen for this event on this side, but in addition to the data, we're going to get our ACK CB like that. Instead of running socket.emit here, we can get rid of that and we'll send back the second thing here, the data like that. And we have done exactly the same thing as before, but we've limited two emits and two ons, which I like. Just to test it out, let's hop back over, refresh. I will click on this. We got here's what you wanted. The server's waiting for some data. If we look at the console, okay, we're right here. I'll hit enter a couple times. Let's click on that. Come back over. Here you go. That was our response, okay? This is really powerful. Use it and, and get the most out of the API. You will be in situations like this all the time and it is there for you to make use of. Write some awesome socket IO, use emit with act. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.